It is the end of December. It is the end of the year. And that means year end special time. Um, we're going to try something a little bit different today. We've had 12 contributors to this weekly series. 12 different people have spoken on the weekly video series this year. And we're going to hear from all 12 today. And the plan is to have each contributor talk about one thing that happened in markets linked to the number one through to 12. So we're going to have the 12 days of markets. And I'm going to start off with number one. On the first day of markets, we didn't get a partridge in a pear tree. We have had a full year of back and forth on inflation and interest rates. All the focus has been on this. It has been driving markets. It has been the main story. On the second day of the markets, we have 2% inflation targets. And they seem pretty far away at the beginning of the year. But saying that, inflation has moved in the right direction for most of the year. And as we sit here today, inflation in the US and Europe is hovering around or even below 3%. So overall, a good result. The third day of markets brought us three US regional bank failures. This ain't shockwaves through the financial system at the time. With Silicon Valley Bank leading the collapse due in part to an old-fashioned bank run and the considerable fall in value of bonds on their balance sheets. On the fourth day of markets, we're brought a company that now ranks fourth in the world by size. A company that until this year, not many people had ever heard of. But NVIDIA, a semiconductor company, is due to close out the year with a gain of over 250%. This is on the back of the artificial intelligence revolution that we saw in 2023. On the fifth day of markets, we saw interest rates go over 5% in the UK and US, some of the highest levels it's been since the global financial crisis, all the way back in 2008. There's even the highest levels it's been in Europe since the inception of the euro. So it's pretty good news if you're a saver, but not so much if you're a mortgage holder. On the sixth day of markets, this year has been all about this inevitable recession that always seemed to be six months away, as interest rate rises eventually had to pass through. But this recession never turned up and kept being pushed back as the service economy and labour markets remained resilient in 2023. On the seventh day of markets, 2023 gave us the Magnificent Seven. These are the seven mega cap tech companies, which between them now make up 28% of the S&P 500 and accounted for more than 80% of the total returns of the S&P 500 for the year. The Magnificent Seven has definitely been the story of 2023. On the eighth day of markets, after eight years of yield curve control, the Bank of Japan's version of quantitative easing appears to be coming to an end as domestic inflation finally reignites after decades of anemic economic growth. Japan is the last developed market central bank with negative interest rates, and this looks set to change in 2024. And on the ninth day of markets, there have been nine global companies valued over one trillion US dollars. Can you name them? Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, NVIDIA, Meta, Tesla, Saudi Aramco and PetroChina. But will there be a new one in 2024? On the 10th day of markets, the European Central Bank finally brought to an end a sequence of 10 consecutive rate hikes by announcing a pause in October of 2023 as inflation finally showed signs of getting under control. Looking ahead, markets are expecting this to turn into an interest rate cutting cycle next year, with four or five cuts taking interest rates to below 3% by the end of the year. On the 11th day of the markets, $11,000 is the reported monthly income of a computer-generated AI influencer on social media called Atania Lopez. She now has over 230,000 followers on Instagram, sponsored by various different brands. And the best part is, she isn't even real. On the 12th day of markets, all major regional equity markets returned 12% or more for the year, except for emerging markets, which struggled, relatively speaking, due to their large weight on the underperforming Chinese economy.
Thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoy some time off with your friends and family over the holiday season, and we'll be back in January with a new episode.